G'day, uh, my name is Tom and today I want to talk to you about atoms and molecules. So first up, atoms. Okay, well, an atom is a unit of matter and there are many types. Each type of atom, each type, we call an element. Okay? Now there are, you know, like more than 100 of these elements. Uh, however, only 24 are essential to humans, to our bodies. Okay? Let's have a quick look at what those essential ones are. We have, we can break the essential elements uh, down into the major, mineral, and trace elements. Um, the major elements account or account for more than 99% of the total atoms in our body. Uh, mineral elements are 0.7 and trace elements are less than 0.01. Um, so as you can see the vast majority of uh, elements, uh, the, the atoms in our body are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon and nitrogen. So these ones here are really quite important to us. Okay, so what's the difference between particular atoms? Well, there are three subatomic particles which are important when we're talking about chemical properties. There are more than just three subatomic particles, but these are the three that we'll talk about today. One of those are protons, another is neutrons, and another one, the electrons. Okay, now protons, they have a plus one charge, neutrons have no charge, electrons have a negative one charge. Okay, and you might see me write the protons like that, the neutrons like this, and the electrons like that. Okay? Cool. Alright. Well, what does a atom look like exactly? Well, let me just draw one. I'm going to draw carbon and the symbol for that is C. So, I'll draw the neutrons first. Carbon has six neutrons and one, two, three, four, five, six protons and this area here in the center this is called the atomic nucleus oops nucleus and what um, what surrounds the atomic nucleus are the electrons so if we go one two three four five six electrons and what these electrons do is they, um, although it's a bit more complicated than this, they sort of orbit around the atomic nucleus. Um, it is a bit more complicated than that, but we can think of it like this um, if we want to. And I'll just draw, I want to draw a, an even simpler version. So let's pretend this was the atomic nucleus. Surrounding the atomic nucleus are our electrons and we can think of them as in different shells. So for example, uh, in the first shell we have two electrons and in the outer shell we have these other electrons. And these electrons in the outer shell, or the outermost shell, I'm not using really technical words here, but the outermost shell, these ones are called the valence electrons, okay? And that, that's important, um, that will be important, these valence electrons, they will be important um, when we talk about bonding and molecules. Okay, so th that's an example of a carbon atom and, and that is two. Um, so Okay, well what, what are some easy ways that we can talk about these atoms? Well, um, every atom has a unique 
atomic number and the atomic number just equals the number of protons okay so hydrogen has one proton therefore its atomic number I'll just write a n is one and carbon has six protons so its atomic number is six okay um, so another another thing that you need to probably be aware of is atomic weight atomic weight and atomic weight is equal to the protons plus the neutrons now the the electrons uh, technically do have weight but they uh, have they're very very light in comparison to the protons and the neutrons so we won't factor them in to our calculations but um, let's let's take the example of hydrogen hydrogen has one proton it doesn't have any neutrons but it has an electron and so its atomic weight I'll write aw is one and carbon it has six protons six electrons and six neutrons so its atomic weight oops, is 12 so, okay now there there are different forms of for example there are different forms of carbon um, and we call these different forms isotopes okay and so the different isotopes so C12 12 being the atomic number of this particular type of carbon which as I said has six protons, six electrons, six neutrons that's a particular isotope or form of carbon another form is C14 and you say well okay if if the normal carbon has six protons and six neutrons and we're not factoring in the electrons into our atomic weight and this number symbolizes the atomic weight um, then C14 must have at least you know it must have two more of either protons or neutrons or one of each or something well what we, we can't add more protons or else we actually change the element so we have to change the neutrons because remember that the protons the number of protons in an element are unique because of the atomic number okay so we can't change the number of protons we can only change the number of neutrons so in C14 which is an isotope of carbon we have six protons because we can't add any more or else it will change the element we have six electrons because uh, all, uh, all elements in their atomic form uh, are electrically neutral and so the, the charges have to balance out we have six positive six negative therefore together the charges equal zero so um, and sorry just getting back to the isotope so we have six protons so then we must have eight neutrons to give us the atomic weight of 14 which this is okay and actually you might think okay well you just added two neutrons that doesn't change any of the charges um, because the neutrons have no charge remember um, so what what's the big deal what is the difference between these two well this one the carbon 12 I'll write it again here actually C12 this is the normal version okay this is the most abundant version uh, the most abundant isotope I should say of carbon in our universe however there's other isotopes and C14 is an isotope of carbon and this isn't normal this is actually radioactive radioactive and so you can see even though we only added two extra neutrons it's made a big difference in the chemical properties of this particular atom. Alright, now I just want to have a quick chat about molecules. Molecules. Okay. Um, do you might remember just back here, we'll back up a bit, here, I mentioned that valence electrons are important 
when we talk about so these ones in the outermost shell are important when we talk about bonding and uh, molecules because all molecules are, are two or more atoms bonded together so um, when we talk about a molecule we're just we're really just talking about a group of atoms two or more which are bonded together chemically and you might say okay well how Tom how do these how do these bonds come about well if we take our example of carbon okay and this is the sort of electron diagram very simple diagram of carbon now if we were talking about these valence remember we were talking about these valence electrons before but if we were to talk about this um, becoming a molecule let's talk about it becoming a molecule a molecule called methane okay methane is CH4 meaning it's got one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms so let's draw in the, the hydrogen atoms and I'll show you how this bonding this chemical bonding works a hydrogen atom could be here and it has an electron because remember we said hydrogen doesn't have any neutrons it just has one proton one electron and we could have another one here oops, and another one here and another one here and these dots here are shared electrons now so the hydrogens the hydrogens are, are wanting to fill up their shell their outermost shell, their valence shell, so that their valence electrons can be paired up like this. Okay, and when they pair up, um, they're actually uh, becoming more stable. Okay, and so by by uh, becoming a molecule, these atoms are able to to become more stable, and and by doing that, they form bonds. Now you can see here, there are four shared electrons and and if we were to represent this just with simple letters we could draw it like this and we would represent the bonds like that and those those single lines represent two shared electrons two shared electrons okay and uh, so as you can see uh, hydrogen can only make one bond carbon on the other hand can make four there are other elements for example nitrogen can make uh, three and uh, oxygen for example can make two so there are lots of different varieties um, of bonding there's also double bonding for example CO2 two carbons uh, sorry one carbon and two oxygens that that sort of looks like this and it has two bonds and so these two bonds up here a single bond remember was two shared electrons here two bonds are four shared electrons so this is a double bond and this is stronger um, and slightly more complex okay I'll just move over here and um, I also just wanted to mention uh, that uh, that molecular shape molecular shape is really important um, and we're going to look a lot about look look at a lot at this and talk a lot about this uh, later in the fo in the following parts in this module